Now, personal life. <laughs> Everyone wants to know, is she married? Is she not married? Wait a minute. We've seen the sindur, the kungumam on her forehead, and we've seen her wearing tali kodi around her neck. Is she married? How come her husband is not to be seen? Well, uh, I met this person who happened to be an English gentleman. I met when I was um, working for Christian Dior, my first year in Christian Dior. He, he was employed with the government organization in the UK, the DWP, the pension department. He was doing very well for himself. And uh, we had a beautiful marriage um, for about a good nine and a half years. And uh, the marriage ended. The marriage ended, and today, I, once upon a time, I was shy away to tell the reason why my marriage ended. But today, I'm bold enough to say it was due to domestic violence, and I wasn't going to put up to it. And uh, this is an advice to every woman out there who's going through domestic violence. I went through it, and uh, I was suicidal, and I came out of it. There's this movie by Julia Roberts. Sleeping with the Enemy. It was like some years back. It was a very nice movie. And when I saw the movie those days, I say, how foolish can a woman be to put up with all this nonsense, what a man can do, this, this unthinkable nightmare a man can do it unto his wife. And until when I went through it, I realized um, why women cry in silence. So I came out of it, I was suicidal, I came out of it and I'm here today. Today you call me such a, a lot of people have said I'm a very bold character, a brave character, but once upon a time I was a victim of domestic violence and why I'm telling you all today this, my personal matter, which once upon a time I would never, I would just say, uh, you know, we, we, we didn't get along well and at some point we just drifted away and we divorced. So this is the real reason for my divorce, why I'm saying women wake up. <coughs> It's not worth it going to a, being in a marriage where there's domestic violence in it. Hear it from me, a victim of domestic violence who came out and rebuilt my life. And I'm extremely successful today in God's grace. Right? That's what happened in my marriage. So at the moment, I'm single. I'm a divorcee. I've been single for like about four years now. And uh, they do ask me the question, she's single. Is she ready to mingle? Yes, at this time, I'm ready to mingle. But the past four years, I was rebuilding my life from scratch. Used to be a married woman who had a home, who had a marriage, who had a husband. And uh, once that was all taken away, I was lost and I had to rebuild myself. Let it be my career and, and, and everything. Because at that time, I was leaving Christian here after 10 years of work. I wanted to be a freelance makeup artist which I became very, very popular. And yeah, not forgetting, I used to do fashion modeling, uh, catwalk modeling, photography modeling. Uh, I used to do a lot of modeling as an Indian model with Indian outfits in UK. And I was very prominently featured in uh, London Indian Fashion Week. And even till today, I do it whenever the offer is there and they approach me. And I mainly concentrate on Indian clothes from those days. And at that point, <laughs> you'll be surprised. I did model for Victoria's Secret lingerie. Vasantra modeling lingerie. Yes, I did it at that time. But today, if you ask me, <laughs> I would shy away. Uh, because they were using uh, Indian handloom cotton to make lingeries for women. And they wanted Indian models. And I was fortunate to be selected payment was really good mom and dad didn't know about it and when finally when they came to know about it and the whole roof came tumbling down uh, I did that expect of it so today I'm doing photography modeling and uh, jewelry ads sari ads and um, catwalk um, I do during uh, Indian London Indian Fashion Week and that's what that's my career and then I, I was I gave up a Christian job because I wanted to be a freelance makeup artist and I wanted to open up my own dance school but to work for Christian Dior 9 to 5 it wasn't achievable so I made the bold move so I needed that four years for me to rebuild myself so today I'm single and ready to mingle and even if I don't meet a nice person I'm not going to cry over it because I'm really happy now with life with my lovely godchildren's left, right, and center, my god sisters, my god brothers, my 
well wishes, my friends, my fans, my family. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. But if someone nice comes my way, why not? Okay? It's not going to be once bitten, twice shy. Second luck, you never know. So, <laughs> I bet I'll be getting a lot of proposals on my messenger. <laughs> <coughs> Let's see how it goes. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Then after that, what happened is that, yes, okay, my God children, my life, my pillar of strength, my confidence, my confidence. I've got five boys and five girls and um, they're lovely, lovely ones. Here in UK, I mean, some of them are here in UK, uh, happen to be, of course, the eldest one is in uh, Kuwait. And this, this side of my house, I have all the pictures <laughs> of my godchildren. And that side of my house, I have pictures of my mum and dad and my immediate family. So these are all my lovely godchildren here. So the eldest one is in Kuwait. Adam is doing very well for himself and he's the first one to have called me Amma and with his luck after that came nine other kiddos that called me their Amma, Godmother and I have a very very good bonding with them that I really communicate with them. In UK I've got um, Harini happens to be in Johor Bahru and a husband happens to be working here so my son-in-law is here who when I, I fondly call him Maple and he calls me Amma, I say, you must call me uh, Mami. He say, no, you are Amma to me as well. Yeah, Amma, Harini's Amma is an Amma to me as well. Then I've got my darling son, Prem, my godson, which I knew him as a four-year-old, as a baby, in fact. Okay, then I've got Meenakshi and I've got Meena, all my lovely godchildren in UK. And we always have this get-together thing and everything, and, and they give me this boost in life. And I'm very fortunate. And others I do have abroad, and I do have in uh, I do have them abroad. So coming back um, about my attire, where do you get your saris? I shop them in uh, Malaysia, Singapore, India, Dubai. I bought one Kanjivaram sari in Dubai, Knife Road, Nalis, and this one I bought it in London. Okay, it's a Kanjivaram sari. And uh, yeah, in London you have a lot of saris and everything and all. And I love saris because uh, even those days with my husband, you know, he, he gets invited to a lot of uh, official government dinners and charity balls and everything. I'm always dressed in a sari. And uh, even I myself, I love saris and the recognition I get in a sari is tremendous. And I feel my best quality is to be in a sari and I feel that I'm born. Like sari kagabe porangava. So I was born for saris and I love my saris very well. And even in the UK, during the summer, I'm always in a sari and I get a lot of compliments from non Indians. And uh, it's such a nice feeling. During the winter, if at all I've got a special function, let it be a dance performance or something, I put my sari on and put my jacket on. In summer, I flaunt my sari like nobody's business because I love my saris. And how many saris have you got, Basantra? I have got nine suitcase full of saris. And my best saris, my favorite ones are my Kanjivaram saris. I love my Kanjivaram saris and I'm, I'm always into Kanjivaram saris. The pattern, because it's very tradition. I like all the traditional motif and everything and all. Uh, then I go to Kanji cotton. Kanji cotton is a vibrant color. Kanjivaram, Kanji cotton, a vibrant color. A traditional motif then uh, I love my sunguri saris and my madurai sunguri saris cotton saris as well so these are the ones hardly wear nilex and I hardly wear sequin saris somehow I feel nothing like kanji but I'm, I hope you all agree with me and um, you don't come cheap though so I have to really save and get my kanji but saris and I love vibrant vibrant colors Choices of jewelry and and uh, are very particular when people buy me saris, you know, because I have a taste. And sometimes when someone buys you a sari, even if it's not your taste, you have to wear it to please them, and I feel really uncomfortable. One person I can daringly, two person I can daringly ask them to get me a sari is my mother, who lives in Malaysia, and. Uh, Ranjini Amma, who, who's like the godmother to me, who lives originally from Swiss, Swiss citizen, and she lives in Malaysia. Uh, she's come back to Malaysia now. 
So these are the two women I can daringly ask them to get me a sari. Ah, and then my godbrother, Anand, Anand Bas, which I fondly call him Anand Baba, uh, and his wife Shanti Akka, I call them, uh, they are from Telugu community, so Baba means uh, brother in law. Uh, Shanti Akka and, uh, no, Anand, Anand, Anand Baba, I can daringly say he knows my cup of tea. And uh, I like those traditional borders and traditional motif. I just love them, simply love them. And what else? Yeah, family. I'm the fifth child out of six children. Uh, the oldest is a sister, lives in Sydney, and uh, second is a brother who lives in Malaysia. Third is my sister who lives in Manhattan, New York. Fourth is my brother who's in Malaysia. Fifth is me, and after five years come my younger brother. And we all still keep in touch. And I lost my father. So I have to say, I lost my father and I miss him so much. And he, I lost him in 2016. And mum is still in Malaysia. So the three boys are in Malaysia, the three girls are abroad. And I love my mum too much. Who's my role model? First role model definitely is my mother. Why? Because she's a bold character, strong character. When the going gets tough, the tough gets going. And the only way is up. She has never left faith in life. She, our family went through a lot. And God's grace, we're doing very, very well. You know, sometimes in family you have turbulence. But it was my mother who pulled all of us together and, and you know, sailed the boat. She was the anchor. And I learned a lot from her. Okay, that's the family. Who is my role model? My role model is my mother. Secondly, is uh, the ex-chief minister of Tamil Nadu, Jay Ladida. Uh, Dr. Kamala Silvarajaka, who happens to be uh, the late Kadal Manan actor Gemini Ganesan's second daughter, and another daughter is Rekha, my idol role model, and Lakshmi Ramakrishna Nakka, Solvatalam Mume, is because of her I have this coffee with Vat, inspired me to do coffee with Vat. Vani Ganapati Akka, you know, the classical dancer Vani Ganapati, who happens to be Kamala Hassan's uh, ex wife. I really admire these people in my life. Not forgetting my school teacher, Mrs. Siva Sundaram. And I love you. And I don't call her teacher, I call her Amma. Uh, Mrs. Siva Sundaram has got no kids and she took all of us as her kids and I love her. And thank God after a long gap, I left Malaysia. Finally, uh, two years ago, I managed to rekindle back, got her WhatsApp number. And she's so proud of me and she's full of blessings. I am so happy in that way. And uh, what happened? What else can I cover? Okay, were you given, I mean, uh, you do your TikTok so well and full of expressions and you have the looks. Were you given a chance? Were you approached? Why don't you become a cinema star? Or were you approached? Well, um, I was not approached in Malaysia, but when I came to London, I was approached in the Tamil film industry where they wanted to take a Tamil movie in UK and uh, they wanted me to play the lead role. The title of the movie was Mrs. Hitler and to be shot in London about a character about a woman who doesn't like men at all because she was jilted by her boyfriend. Since then she just hated uh, uh, men and she owns a successful five-star hotel in London and um, what happened is that one of the regular guests falls in love with her and uh, tries to approach her and everything. So, film industry, we hear a lot of uh, the Me Too movement has been talking about the film industry, the uh, Hollywood film industry and the Tamil film industry, South Indian, Indian film industry. And uh, yes, and there's this thing called couch casting. I only went for two days uh, shooting and I, I did the dialogue delivery so well and I did my part well and by the third day uh, they were trying to act funny with me those people in the film industry in that movie project the men there the cameraman the producer and you know the couch casting thing just because they thought this girl is coming into cinema and I was never crazed about it. I was into Bharatanatyam, my makeup job and everything. So I thought, why not just give it a try? At least one movie. So when they kind of misbehaved, I still remember, I just put on a tantrum, took off the sari, and, uh, you know, it was in a hotel room. 
we were doing the changing and everything there and uh, my suitcase was on the third floor and I was on the twelfth floor right and I was so angry with the misbehavior that 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 bloody attitude that mentality that women who come to the cinema industry they have to be uh, going through the couch casting and they feel that they are easy and everything and all I was really pissed off I was mad hopping mad and the sari was from the production so I they said oh if you're gonna leave the room you better take out the sari and go that belongs to us it's our property I think I was very very nasty of that man what I did is I just took off the sari I walked from the 12th floor I took the lift right down to the third floor and I was just with my blouse in my power deck, got all of my bag, put on my jeans, called a friend and uh, they, he was trying to be rude and, and, and you know overpowering. I said look here this is Great Britain not India right. One phone call to the police and you all begin to be locked and I walked out and after that um, I wasn't into the film and never just looked that way. Yes, I would like to do at least one movie, one movie in my lifetime, but I would never uh, do favors to anyone, any man in the film industry to get a chance. If I deserve it, give it to me. If I don't, life goes on. K sera sera. And uh, my ambition is to do this talk show uh, full on uh, in a proper pedestrian television, just like Solvatala Munme or Oprah Winfrey show or a Jeremy Kyle show or uh, Sherry show and everything you know a women's talk show kind of thing that covers a lot of things I would like to do something like that that's my aim that's my dream please pray for me that it will come true and uh, what else can I say huh okay mm, what else can I think about uh, principles in life principle in life okay yeah they do ask me only think positive behave positively everything positive will happen your way if you see anyone who is negative being with you because it's negative people they creep into you so just cut them off completely and uh, jealousy is cancerous because whenever I see someone doing well in life and I feel always happy for them and I tell myself I want to be like them how did they achieve it role model like how Rekha as in Bollywood cinema they called her ugly duckling into a swan so I told myself I learned from her how to become a swan I am this looks and everything is because of uh, the actress Banu Rekha yes I took up classical dancing in uh, India from uh, classical dancing part of it My, I first started with a teacher in Malaysia uh, Indra Karala Singham and after that uh, I studied from various dance schools. I'm a product of Temple of Fine Arts, uh, Malaysia. I was uh, taught by my teacher Vatsila Sivadas. I was taught by Ramli Ibrahim, taught by Krishna Kumari and Dr. Amrita and Madhavan Master. These are all my teachers in uh, Malaysia. And uh, what happened, I was very keen in Bhardhanatyam. So from the age of 12, during my final year after my exam is finished, the month of October, November, December, I was flew off to India. And while I was doing Bhardhanatyam, my brother was one year older to me, he took up Mridangam. And uh, I myself, um, uh, the late uh, Kardal Mannan, Germany Ganesan actor, is a very, very good, extremely good friend of my father. They are like brothers. So my father needed to house me somewhere so I stayed with them and uh, Mr. Gemini Ganesan, uh, I could fondly call him Mama and I call his wife Alameenu Amma as Mami, Babji Mami. Gemini uh, Mama got me this master Natura Narajan Singhamani Nadarajan who comes from the Tanjaur quarter, the Tanjaur style he taught me. And, uh, Germany Mama was my godparents and I had another godparent Dr. Rai. So if I'm either in Germany Mama's house or Dr. Rai's house, so it was a very strict uh, environment. Three months every year from the age of 12 until I did uh, 17, 18. Every year I was flying in there and in and out, in and out and learning dance. And today's style of uh, Abhinaya and everything, um, it's from all the teachers that taught me. I've taken 
cherry pick their style and came with my own style of dancing and uh, I concentrate more on facial expression why because on stage you are there to entertain like some styles of dance forms in Bharatanatyam doesn't do much facial expression and I'm sorry to say it can be quite boring though I'm here to entertain my audience so they'll come back in UK uh, in a year I give four dance performance for charitable organization that would be Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan or the Nehru Center or some temple fundraising charity organizations and everything and Navaratri I perform so this year due to COVID and everything everything has gone hunky-dunky hunky-dory and haywire has gone bad shape isn't it okay so what else can I say yes I've always thought positive and uh, to me when I come to a crisis if I have a crisis in life what I do I hope for the best and I prepare for the worst. In a scenario, what's the best thing can happen? Something happens in your favor. In the same time, what worst thing can happen? Mentally prepare for yourself. So when the worst thing happens to you, you know for a fact that you can overcome it. All right? You're mentally prepared. And um, I just despise people who are not genuine. If you want to be my friend, you be a genuine friend of mine. And uh, you just be there for me to take the bullet and I'll take the bullet for you. Don't befriend a person for a reason, you know, to be opportunist. Okay, through this person I can gain that, through that person I can gain that. Because you know why? Eventually, your color will fade, your true nature will be known. And end of the day, you'll be a loner crying. And ask yourself, where have you gone wrong? So religious-wise, I accept all religion and I believe there's one almighty there called the creator because in my theory paramatma is always seeking the jivatma jivatma is always seeking the paramatma connection hence the reason why when i hit the bed i always say knowing or unknowingly if i've hurt anyone's feeling god please forgive me okay bad comments okay i do get bad comments in uh, tiktok is just a hobby to me and uh, in god's grace i've got a lot of um Big fan flows and TikTok, okay, and I'm so happy about it. Okay, now, um, what do you do to bad comments? Well, and people who bitch about you and talk ill about you. Well, those who speak at the back of me will always remain at the back of me and I'll always move forward, right? Million steps forward because they can always be at the back. They can't come in front of me, hence the reason they bitch about me. And uh, once upon a time, when people hurt my feelings and everything, I'll just move away into a dark room and start crying. But life has taught me to become a bold person that whoever speaks ill about me, whoever is nasty towards me, in front of me, whoever does it at the back, they have got no guts. Whoever does it in front of me, I give them back as good as what I get. In fact, I give them back a million times more and I challenge them. I don't look for trouble, but when trouble comes looking for me, I will face it hands on. Okay? So that's my principle. And uh, what else can I say here? Huh? My favorite color is this color. Royal blue is my favorite color. I love royal blue. Once upon a time, I thought it was black. Eh? I got black, I got royal blue. And I didn't plan it. Okay. And this happens to be one of my favorite Kanjuram sarees I bought in London. So, uh, these are my principles in life. And um, it doesn't hurt to be nice to a person. But in the same time, don't hurt a person's feelings. Okay? And never judge. You shall be judged. Well, uh, if people expect me to accept their opinion, whether I like it or not, I'm one, sorry, I'm one person who do not expect people to accept my opinion is for you to accept or not to accept is up to you and at the same time if others expect me to accept their opinion whether i like it or not is their utter stupidity so this is what life is all about for me my journey of life and um, i just want to say to all my loved ones my children my god children my god sisters my god brothers you all know who you all are my god mothers my god fathers you all know who you all are my love my friends my well wishes my fans and everything i take this opportunity to say 
thank you very much for being there for me i am where i am today because of you guys and thank you thank you very much so and at this time in life you see if you were to go and ask any tom dick and harry how are you they'll say i'm fine but i've got this issue i'm fine but i've got that issue i'm fine i've got whatever issues if you were to ask me today how are you vasundra sundaram i would say i'm very satisfied i'm extremely satisfied in god's grace how things are going on with me okay and um, i hope most of uh, your questions have been answered thank you very much for giving this opportunity and uh, what else i can say make love not war you live only once make the best out of it thank you till the next time i see you coffee with bas goodbye to my rasas and rasat